Hey, this is Cody with Sneaky Kitty Game Dev, and in this series, we are going to be covering basically the basics that you need to know for dedicated servers and dedicated server programming. Now, in this video specifically, all we're going to be doing is getting a dedicated server up and running so we can launch that as a separate application and then launch two client applications that will connect to the dedicated server and allow us to see each other moving around and playing and all that kind of stuff. And now, the other stuff that I do want to cover in this series is going to be more smaller stuff. So if you're familiar with my YouTube channel, my videos are ready, you know that basically everything I do feature-wise is multiplayer ready. So that means it's ready to go for listen servers, which is player hosted, as well as dedicated servers. However, with dedicated servers, if you're going to be specifically using that as a method of connecting clients, I want to show you some really cool tricks. So there's some things that you can do to make you know, things like cheat development a little bit harder. So for people that are trying to decompile and reverse your game, what you can actually do is wrap your code around certain if defines and compile your code out of the client build. So what I mean by that is you'll have your server build that'll contain all of your logic, all of your code, everything you've typed, and then you'll have the client build that you send and, you know, people download on Steam. That build will have stuff stripped out of it that runs on the server. So that way people, as they're going through and stepping through it, you know, something like, let's say they're trying to read it out in something like Ida Pro or something like that. That logic is not going to exist because it has been compiled out of your own machine or of the own that build. So let's go ahead and begin. Now, before we fully get started, one thing you have to be aware of, the way I'm going to show you, you must be using it, the source build of Unreal Engine. So that means the build that you get from GitHub, you have to download it, compile it, and then you'll be good to go. So I already have two videos on it. And the first one is the one that I would recommend you watch. It's just very straight and to the point. It is unrelated to chaos or anything like that. As you can see here, which I'm doing in the second video. So this should just get you up and running to where you have the source build compiled and ready to go. Now I am on 4.27. This is on 4.26. However, the method is the exact same. And it's the exact same even if you're on the source build of Unreal Engine 5. However, as of this date, Unreal Engine 5 is still in early access, and I have tried two different branches, and both of which any of my package default projects, including just the default third person, you know, template project, I have gone untouched. They have not been changed, and the package builds for both the server and the client both just keep crashing, and I haven't dove into it to try to figure out why. So that is the reason we're on UE4 right now. But anyways, watch this video if you don't know how, if you don't already have it, and then you'll be good to go and up to speed. Now that you have the source build launched, your project made, we are ready to actually start working. So as you can see here, I'm just on the example third person project that comes with the engine. And the only thing we're gonna do here is add a file, make some small changes to it, compile. Well, we're gonna be compiling twice and then we'll be good to go. So if this is not obvious, this is the C++ project. So if you build a blueprint project, what you need to do is actually add a C++ file, or a C++ file to it to be, you know, have access to the solution and all that kind of stuff so you can actually make these changes. So what you can do is go to add, and let's see, it's been a long time since I've done this, one moment. Okay, found it. So you just go to file for Unreal Engine 4, new C++ class, add literally any class that you want, and you should be good to go. That should create the C++ classes section, should allow you to have a source folder, as well as your solution. So. Once we are there, what we need to do is go to source, and here you will see your build target. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is we want to duplicate this. So let's copy it and paste it. Then after your project name right here, we wanna add server and then remove the copy at the end, just like so. Now we wanna bring that into our IDE. So with Visual Studio, it is very similar. So you can see the original build target right here. We just want to right click on source, add, Add existing, yours would be the exact same in Visual Studio, and then add the project name server.target. So let's go ahead and bring that in and close out of our editor. Next up, we need to rename this, this, and change this to server. So we're gonna have Diddy server tutorial or your project name, server target. Same thing here, project name, server target, and the type is going to be target type dot server. Once you have that, you're pretty much good to go. The only thing we want to do now is go ahead 
and right click on our U project here, generate the Visual Studio project files. Then we can come over here and go ahead and build our project. Okay, now once that's done, we're gonna change from development editor. In your case, it would be over here in Visual Studio and scroll all the way down until we find development server. And in my case, I'm on a 64-bit Windows machine. So I'm gonna choose development server Win64. Select that, let it do all its stuff that it needs to over in the solution. Okay, after about 10 or 15 seconds, we're good to go. So now we can right click and build our project once more. Now this is gonna take a little bit and depending on how many files you actually have, in my case, originally this was at about, I think 750 files, you will be good to go. So I will see you in a few minutes. Okay, now because I've already done this before, I only have four. So the way you can also check is if you go to binaries, 164, you will see your own dedicated server application right here. So once we have all that, we're all built up. Let's go ahead and change this right on back to the development editor, 164, and go ahead and run our project. Alrighty, now we are pretty much done. The only thing we really need to do is make a simple entry map and then connect the clients. So we just have to make the entry map, set up uh, the whitelisted maps that we want to be exported with the pack, you know, with the build, and set the entry map for the server and for the clients, and we are good to go. So what I'm gonna do here is, for the time being, I'm just gonna duplicate this third person example map, like so, and just name it entry level. So entry level is gonna be where the clients load up. So this is gonna be what they load. The server is gonna load up the actual example map. So this is what we're seeing right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and load that up and I'm gonna go ahead and quickly build the lighting. Alrighty, just so I could generate all the stuff that I needed. So anyways, gonna go ahead and save after you made the map. And this is basically where you would have your main menu. So we're gonna to go to settings, project settings, maps and modes, and the editor startup and game default map. Let's go ahead and change that to the entry level that we just made. Then click this little drop down tab here and the server default map, you want to be the third person example map. So mine's already correct by default. Then we wanna to go to packaging and under this first section, hit the little drop down and we wanna scroll down until we find list of maps to include in a packaged build. So we wanna add one and here we wanna select the entry level dot U map. We're gonna add the other one. This is gonna be our third person example map dot U map. Once we're done with that, we can close there, file, save all, and now we're ready to actually package this out. So we're gonna to go to file, package project, go to build, whoops, go to build target. And here you can see we have the project itself and the server target that we made. So that is this guy right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and build out the client first just to make sure that it's working. So I wanna select my non-server build target. Come down here to make sure I'm on, for now I'm just gonna be on development. You can be on really any of these. Go to Windows 64 bit. I'm gonna go to my project root right here. And I'm just gonna create a new folder, call it tutorial packaged. And I'm going to select folder. And this is where I'm going to build out my project too. Okay, mine is completed. So I'm going to go ahead and go to tutorial packaged, Windows No Editor, and launch up the project. So this should just launch up on the map here. I just wanted to make sure that I can actually run around and stuff. So I'm going to press F11 so I'm automatically minimized, and Alt F4 to close. Now I want to build the server. So I'm going to go to file, package project, build target change it to the server, and then do the same thing for Windows 64-bit, same folder, and build it. Alrighty, so that is done. Now we have Windows Server. So let's go ahead and get that started first. Let's open that up, and here we see our application. Now I wanna launch this with the log so I can see it and it makes it a lot easier just for me to actually close it. So I'm gonna right click, create a shortcut, and go to properties of the shortcut, and to the target, I'm just going to append hyphen log, just like so. So now when I run it, we actually get the output log. And I did not mean to click on it. Sometimes that has a tendency to freeze everything up. 
So there we go. Yes, go ahead and allow. And we should be good to go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and run one of the clients, like so, and it's not gonna connect automatically. I'm nope, staring at the guy's crotch. Let's see, how can I, I'll try to tab out. Get that at a better view. There we go. All right, so what I wanna do is I want to connect to myself, so my loopback address. So that is gonna be 127.0.0.1. So I'm gonna type open, 127.0.0.1 and press enter. And there we go. Here you can see I'm connected, so I'm gonna launch up here. And you can also see that I have joined from my desktop. So I'm gonna launch another one of these. Let's try to shrink this down. Come on. There we go. So here we have another one. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So open 127.0.0.1 and press enter. And there we go. So we now have two clients connected through our dedicated server. And it's really as simple as that. So now that we have that out of the way, we have the basis that we need for pretty much everything moving forward. So we can easily build out both client and server builds for testing or, you know, sending to whatever host you're using. Now in the next video, I wanna dive a little bit farther into depth on this, and we're gonna be covering some basic things like auto-connecting you know, to the host if you want to, and that's gonna be through Blueprint, and then we're gonna move on to the more advanced side of things and learning how to use if defines to compile our code outside of the client build, so that way it's just not included with whatever you know application that the client receives just to make it a little bit harder for them to reverse it and possibly write cheats for it in the future. So that would be the main thing. The other thing would be security. So in cases where the server only needs to know, you know, the URL of something specific, you can package that or compile that out of the client build. So if they go through in like IDA and search for strings, they're not gonna be able to find that. However, if they do get a hold of the server, which they shouldn't, you will be able to see it in that application, but not the clients. So. That is going to be all for now. If you like what I'm doing and want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for patrons, as well as you get early access to pretty much all of my videos, such as this one. So, I'll see you in the next video.